The Cube presents Ignite 22. Brought to you by Palo Alto Networks. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to The Cube. Lisa Martin here with Dave Vellante. We are live at Palo Alto Networks Ignite. This is the 10th annual Ignite. There's about 3,000 people here excited to really see where this powerhouse organization is taking security. Dave, it's great to be here. Our first time covering Ignite. People are ready to be back, they, and security is top. It's a board level conversation. It is, the other Ignite, I like to call it, because of course there's another big company has a, a conference named Ignite, so, so I'm really excited to be here. Palo Alto Network's a company we've covered for a number of years, as we just wrote in our recent breaking analysis. We've, we've called them the gold standard, but it's not just our opinion. We've backed it up with data. The company's on track, we think, to do close to $7 billion in revenue by 2023. That's double its 2020 revenue. You can measure it with execution, market cap, M&A prowess, so I'm super excited to have the CEO here. We have the CEO here, Nikesh Aurora joins us from Palo Alto Networks. Nikesh, great to have you on theCUBE, thank you for joining us. Well, thank you very much for having me, Lisa and Dave. It was great to see your keynote this morning. You said that, you know, fundamentally, security is a data problem. Well, these days, every company has to be a data company. Grocery 100%. stores, gas stations, car dealers. How is Palo Alto Networks making customers, these data companies, more secure? Well, Lisa, you know, <clears throat> I've only done cybersecurity for about four, four and a half years. So, when I came to the industry, um, I was amazed to see how security is so reactive as opposed to proactive. We should be able to stop bad threats right as they're happening. But I think a lot of threats get through because we don't have the right infrastructure and the right tooling and the right products in there. So I think we've been working hard for the last four and a half years to turn it around so we can have consistent data flow across an enterprise and then mine that data for threats and anomalous behavior and try and protect our customers. You know, uh, the problem, I wrote this uh, the, this weekend, the problem in cybersecurity is well understood. You put up that Optiv graph and there's like 8,000 yes. companies yes. and I think you mentioned in your keynote, on average, you know, it's 30 to 40 tools, maybe 50, mm -hmm. at least 20 yes. from the folks that I talked to. So, Okay, great, but actually solving that problem is not trivial. Uh, to be a consolidator, I mean, everybody wants to consolidate tools, so uh, in your three to four years in security, as you well know, it's, you can't fake security. It's a really, really challenging topic. So when you joined Palo Alto Networks and you, you heard that strategy, I know you guys have been thinking about this for some time, what did you see as the challenges to actually executing on that, and how is it that you've been able to sort of get through that knothole? So Dave, you know, it's interesting, if you look at the history of cybersecurity, uh, I call them the flavor of the decade. A flavor, you know, a new threat vector gets created, a very large market gets created, a solution comes through, people flock, you get four or five companies which chase that opportunity, and then they become leaders in that space, whether it's firewalls or endpoints or identity, and then people stick to their swim lane. The problem is, that's a very product-centric approach to security. It's not a customer-centric approach. The customer wants a more secure enterprise. They don't want to solve 20 different solution problems with 20 different point solutions, but that's kind of how the industry has grown up, and it's been impossible for a large security company in one category to actually have a substantive presence in the next category. Now, what we've been able to do in the last four and a half years is, uh, you know, from our firewall base, we had resources, we had intellectual capability from a security perspective, and we had cash. So we used that to pay off our technical debt. We acquired a bunch of companies, we created capability. In the last three years, uh, four years, we've created three incremental businesses which are all on track to hit a billion dollars in the next 12 to 18 months. Yeah, so it's interesting, on Twitter last night we had a little conversation about acquirers and who was a good, who was not so good. There was, there was Oracle, they came up actually very high, they'd done pretty, pretty good job. VMware was on the list, IBM, Cisco, ServiceNow. And if you look at IBM and Cisco's strategy, they tend to be very services heavy, mm -hmm. right? How is it that you have been able to, you mentioned get rid of your technical debt, you invested in that. I wonder if you could, was it the, the cloud, even though a lot of the cloud was your own cloud, was that a difference uh, in terms of your ability to integrate? Because so many company, companies have tried it in the past. Oracle, I think, has done a good job, but it took them 10 to 12 years you know, to, to get there. What was the sort of secret sauce? Is it culture, or is it just great engineering? It's, it's a, thank you for that. I think, look, it's, it's a mix of everything. First and foremost, you know, there are certain categories we didn't play in, so there was nothing to integrate. 
we built a capability in the category, in automation. We didn't have a product. We acquired a company, it's a net new capability. In incident response, we didn't have a capability. It was net new capability. So there was, there was other than integrating culturally and into the organization, into our go-to-market processes, there was no technical integration needed. Most of our technical integration was needed in our cloud platform, which we bought five or six companies, we integrated them. We just bought one recently called Cider Security as well, which is going to get integrated in the cloud Blockchain, platform. Yeah. And the thing is like, the cloud platform is net new in the industry. We, nobody's created a cloud security platform yet. So we're working hard to create it because we don't want to replicate the mistakes of the past that were made in enterprise security and cloud security. So it's a combination of uh, cultural integration, it's a combination of technical integration. The two things we do differently, I think, than most people in the industry is, look, we have no pride of, you know, of innovations. Like, if somebody else has done it, we respect it and we'll acquire it. But we always want to acquire number one or number two in their category. I don't want number three or four. They're three or four for a reason, and there still leaves one or two out there to compete with. So we've always acquired one or two, one. And the second thing which is as important is, most of these companies are in the early stage of development. So it's very important for the founding team to be around. So we spend a lot of time making sure they stick around. We actually make our people work for them. My principle is, listen, if they beat us in the open market with all our resources and our people, then they deserve to run this as opposed to us. So most of our new product categories are run by founders of companies acquired. So a little bit of Jack Welch, a little bit of Frank Slootman's is a, you know, always <laughs> deference to the, to the founders, but go ahead, Lisa. So speaking of, of tra cultural transformation, you were mentioning in your keynote this morning, there's been a significant workforce transformation mm -hmm. at Palo Alto Networks. Yes. Talk a little bit about that, because that's a big challenge for many organizations to achieve. Sounds like you've done it pretty well. Well, you know, uh, my old uh, boss, Eric Schmidt, used to say, revenue solves all known problems. Um, which <laughs> kind of, you know, is part joking, part true, but you know, as, as uh, Dave mentioned, we've doubled or two and a half times our revenue since the last four and a half years. That allows you to grow. That allows you to increase headcount. So we've gone from four and a half thousand people to 14,000 people. Good news is, that's 9,500 people are net new to the company. So you can hire a whole new set of people who have new skills, new capabilities, and there's some attrition to four and a half thousand, some part of that turns over in four and a half years, so we effectively have 80% net new people, and the people we have who are there from before are amazing because they've built a phenomenal firewall business. So it's kind of been right-sized across the board. It's very hard to do this if you're not growing. So right. you got to focus on growing. It's like winning in sports. So speaking of firewalls, I got to ask you, do self-driving cars need brakes? So it's, I got to shout out to my friend Zias Caravalla. It's like that's, that's his line about why you need firewalls, right? Yes. I mean, you mentioned it in your keynote today. You said it's the number one question that you get. And, and I don't get it why industry observers don't go back and say this is, this is ridiculous. The network traffic is doubling or tripling. <clears throat> in fact, I, I gave an interesting example. We shut down our data centers, as I said. We are all on Google Cloud and Amazon Cloud. And then, you know, our internal team comes and said we'd want a bigger firewall. I'm like, why do you want a bigger firewall? We shut down our data centers. as well, the traffic coming in and out of our campus has doubled, we need a bigger firewall. So you still need a firewall, even if you're in the cloud. So I want to come back to the <coughs> M&A strategy. My, my question sure. is, can you be both best of breed and develop a comprehensive suite? Number I mean, Part one, and part one A of that is, do you even have to? Because generally, suites win out over best of breed, but how do you, how do you respond? Well, you know, this is this age old debate, yeah. and people, people get trapped in that, I think, in my mind. Um, and let me try and expand the analogy, which I tried to do up in my keynote. You know, let's assume that Oracle, Microsoft Dynamics, and Salesforce did not exist. Okay, and you were running a large company of 50,000 people, and your job was to manage the customer process, which is easier to understand than security. And I said, okay, guess what? I have a coding system and a lead system, but the lead system doesn't talk to my coding system, so I get leads, but I don't know who those customers are. Then I write codes for a whole new set of customers, and I have a customer database. Then when they come as purchase orders, I have a new database with all the customers who've bought something from me, and then when I go give them licensing, I have a new database, and when I go have customer support, I have a fifth database and there are customers in all five databases, you'll say, Nikesh, you're crazy. You should have one customer database. Otherwise, you're never going to be able to make this work. But security is the same problem. Mm. I should, I need consistency in data from soup to nuts. If it's in cloud, if you're writing code, I need to understand the security flaws before they go into deployment, before they go into production. We somehow ridiculously have bought security like IT. Now the difference between IT and security is, IT is required to talk to each other. So a Dell server, an HP server, 
work very similarly. But a Palo Alto firewall and a checkpoint firewall, the Fortinet firewall work fundamentally differently. And then how that transitions into endpoints is a whole different ballgame. So you need consistency in data, as Lisa was saying earlier, it's a data problem. You need consistency as you traverse through the enterprise. And that's why that's the number one need. Now, when you say best of breed, <clears throat> best of breed is fine if it's a specific problem that you're trying to solve. But if you're trying to make sure there's a data flow that happens, you need both best of breed, you know, technology that stops things, and need integration on data. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to give people best of breed solutions in the categories they want, because otherwise they won't buy us, but we're also trying to make sure we stitch the data. But that definition of best of breed is a little bit of nuance and different in security is what I'm hearing, because there's that consistency <coughs> yes. across products. What about across cloud? You mentioned Google and, and Amazon. Yeah, so that's you know, a great question. Are you Look, building the security super cloud, I call it, above the cloud? It's, it's not, it's, it's, it's less so a super cloud, it's more like Switzerland. Uh, and, and I used to work at Google for 10 years, not a secret, and we used to sell advertising. And uh, we decided to go into, pub, into display ads or publishing, right? Now we had no publishing platform, so we had to be good at everybody else's publishing platform. Mm -hmm. But, we never were able to do search ads to anybody else because we only focus on our own platform. So part of it is when the cloud guys, they're busy solving security for their cloud. Google is not doing anything about Amazon Cloud or Microsoft Cloud, Microsoft's Azure, right? AWS is not doing anything about Google Cloud or Azure. So what we do is we don't have a cloud. Our job in providing cloud security is be Switzerland and make sure it works consistently across every cloud. Now, if you try to replicate what we offer in Prisma Cloud by using AWS, Azure, and GCP, you'd have to first of all have three panes of glass for all three of them, but even within them they have four panes of glass for the capabilities we offer. So you could end up with 12 different interfaces to manage a development process. We give you one. Now you tell me which is better. Sounds like a super cloud to me, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's big An Uber cloud. cloud. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh, I like that, Uber cloud. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so I want to understand, Nikesh, what's realistic? You mentioned in your keynote, Dave brought it up, that the average organization has 30 to 50 tools, security yes, tools, yes. on their network. What is realistic for, from a consolidation perspective, <coughs> where Palo Alto can come in and say, let me make this consistent and simple for you? Well, I'll give you our own example, right? <coughs> We're probably sub 10, substantively. Right? But there may be small things here and there we do, but on a substantive protecting the enterprise perspective, you be, should be down to eight or 10 vendors, and that is not perfect, but it's a lot better than 50. Right. Because don't forget, 50 tools means you have to have capability to understand what those 50 tools are doing. You have to have the capability to upgrade them on a constant basis, learn about their new capabilities, and I, I just can't imagine why customers have two sets of firewalls, right? Now you've got to learn both the firewalls and how to deploy both of them, that's silly. Because that's why we need seven million more people. So you need people to understand so all these tools who work for companies. If you had less tools, we need less people. So you'd think, you know, I, I wrote about this as well, that it, it, the security <laughs> industry is anomalous and that the leader has you know, single digit, low yes, single digit yes. market shares. Do you think that you can change that? Well, uh, you know, when I started, that was exactly the observation I had, Dave, which you highlighted in your article. We were the largest by revenue by small margin and we were one and a half percent of the industry. Now we're closer to three, three to four percent. And we're still, at, you know, like you said, going to be around seven billion dollars. So you know, I see a path for us to double from here and then double from there. Mm. And hopefully as we keep doubling, at some point in time, you know, I, I'd like to get to double digits to start with. One of the things that, that I think has to happen is this has to grow dramatically, the ecosystem. I wonder if you could talk about the ecosystem and your strategy there. Well, you know, it's a matter of perspective. I think we have to get more penetrated in our largest customers. So we have you know, 1,800 of the top 2,000 customers in the world are Palo Alto customers, but we're not fully penetrated with all our capabilities in the same customer set. So yes, the ecosystem needs to grow, uh, but the pandemic has taught us the ecosystem can grow whatever they are without having to come to Vegas, which I don't think is a bad thing to be honest. Uh, so the ecosystem <laughs> is growing. You are seeing new players come to the ecosystem. Five years ago, you didn't see a lot of system integrators and security. You didn't see security offshoots of telecom companies. You didn't see the Optives, the WWTs, the Presidios of the world <coughs> make a concerted shift towards consolidation or services, and all that is happening. Mm. As we speak today, in the audience, you will find people from Google, Amazon, Microsoft are sitting in the audience, people from telecom companies are sitting in the audience. These people weren't there five years ago, so you are seeing mm -hmm. the ecosystem is adapting. They're, they want to be front and center of solving the customer's problem around security, and they want to consolidate the capability they need. They don't want to go work with 100 vendors, because you know, it's, like, it's hard. 
and the global system integrators are key. I always say they like to eat at the trough and there's a lot of money in security. <laughs> yes. you know. Well, speaking of the ecosystem, you had Thomas Curry and Google Cloud yes. CEO in your fireside chat in the yes. keynote. Talk a little bit about how Google Cloud plus Palo Alto Networks, the zero trust partnership and what it's going to enable customers to achieve. Lisa, that's a great question. <clears throat> Thank you for bringing it up. Look, you know, the one of the most fundamental shifts that is happening is obviously the shift to the cloud. Now when that shift fully sort of takes shape, you will realize if your network has changed and you're delivering everything to the cloud, you need to go figure out how to bring the traffic to the cloud. You don't have to bring it back to your data center, you can bring it straight to the cloud. So in that context, you know, we use Google Cloud and Amazon Cloud to be, to be able to carry our traffic. We're going from a product company to a services company in addition, right? Because when we go from firewalls to SASE, we're now carrying your traffic. When we carry your traffic, we need to make sure we have underlying capability, which is world class. We think GCP and AWS and Azure run some of the biggest and best networks in the world. So our partnership with Google is such that we use their public cloud, we sit on top of their cloud, they give us increased and enhanced functionality so that our customer SASE traffic gets delivered in priority anywhere in the world. They give us tooling to make sure that there's high reliability. So as, you know, we partner, they have Beyond Corp, which is their version of zero trust, which allows you to take unmanaged devices with browsers. We have SASE, which allows you to have managed devices. So the combination gives our collective customers the ability for zero trust. Do you feel like there has to be more collaboration within the ecosystem, the security you know, landscape, even amongst competitors? I mean, I think about Google acquires Mandiant. You guys have Unit 42. Should should and will, like Wendy Whitmore, and maybe they already are, Kevin Mandia, talk more and share more data. If security's a data problem, is all yeah, this look, data I think, out there. I think the industry shares threat data, both uh, in private organizations as well as public and private contexts. So that's not a problem. Um, you know, the challenge with too much collaboration in security is you never know. Like, you know, the moment you start sharing your stuff with third parties, you go out of the secure zone. Mm. Our biggest challenge is, you know, I can't, I can't trust a third party com competitor partner product. I have to treat it with as much suspicion as anything else out there because the only way I can deliver zero trust is to not trust anything. So collaboration and zero trust are a bit of odds with each other. Sounds like another problem you can solve. <laughs> <laughs> Nikesh, last question for you. Yes, Favorite customer example that you think really articulates the value of what Palo Alto is delivering? Look, you know, it's a great question, Lisa. Uh, I had this seminal conversation with a customer and I explained all the things we're talking about and the customer said to me, great, okay, so what do I need to do? I said, fun, you got to trust me because, you know, we are on a journey. Because in the past, the customers have had to take the onus on themselves of integrating everything because they weren't sure a small startup will be independent, be bought by another cybersecurity company, or a large cybersecurity company won't get gobbled up and split into pieces by private equity because every one of the cybersecurity companies have had a shelf life. So, you know, our aspiration is to be the evergreen cybersecurity company. We will always be around and we will always tackle innovation and be on the front line. So, the customer understood what we're doing. Over the last three years, we've been working on a transformation journey with them. We're trying to bring them, or we have brought them along the path of zero trust, and we're trying to work with them to deliver this notion of reducing their mean time to remediate from days to minutes. Now, that's an outcome-based approach, that's a partnership-based approach, and we'd like love to have more and more customers of that kind. I think we weren't ready, to be honest, as a company four and a half years ago, but I think today we're ready. Hence, my keynote was called The Perfect Storm. Yeah. I think we're at the right time in the industry with the right capabilities and the right ecosystem to be able to deliver what the industry needs. The Perfect Storm, partners, customers, investors, employees. Nikesh, it's been such a pleasure having you on theCUBE. Thank you for coming to talk to Dave and me right after your keynote. We appreciate that and we look forward to two days of great coverage from your executives, your customers, and your partners. Thank you. Well, thank you for having me, Lisa and Dave, and pleasure. thank you for what you guys do for our industry. Our pleasure. For Nikesh Aurora and Dave Vellante, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE live at MGM Grand Hotel in Las Vegas. Palo Alto Ignite 22. Stick around, Dave and I will be joined by our next guest in just a minute.